Imagine for a moment, standing at the pinnacle of a vast digital empire, the architect of communication networks that connect the entire world. Your company, born from your ambitious vision, is expanding at a breathtaking pace, devouring markets and reshaping the global communications landscape. You've succeeded in connecting billions and turning the world into a true global village. But suddenly, a ghost from the past emerges, a superpower that has dominated the global system for decades and views your rise as an existential threat to its national security. It declares war on you, a ruthless war using every available weapon from economic sanctions to immense political pressure. Do you have the power to survive? Can you withstand this tidal wave? To keep these inspiring stories coming to you, don't forget to subscribe to the Econo Tales family. This scenario is not just science fiction or the plot of a thrilling Hollywood film. It's a real story. The story of a Chinese tech giant called Huawei, which was on the verge of asserting its dominance over global 5G networks, the technology that would redefine everything we know about connectivity and digital life. But suddenly, Huawei transformed from a promising rising force into the number one enemy of the United States. How did this confrontation begin? Why did Washington perceive Huawei as such a massive threat? And was this conflict merely a traditional trade war over economic influence? Or was it something much deeper, tied to the future of the global system and the balance of power? If you were the decision maker in America, would you have taken the same measures? Was there another option? At the heart of this complex drama stands one man, Ren Zhengfei. Who is this Chinese military engineer who emerged from the shadows of the army to establish a technological empire that shook the foundations of the world? In the 1980s, Ren Zhengfei was not a prominent businessman, but a humble engineer who served into the Chinese military. However, his sharp eyes and patriotic heart saw a painful reality. China was alarmingly lagging behind technologically, enslaved to Western technologies and vulnerable to external pressures and sanctions. He witnessed firsthand how technological dependence could weaken nations and threaten their sovereignty. At that time, the seeds of the technological revolution were beginning to sprout in other parts of the world, and Ren fully understood that the future would be written in the language of numbers and networks. He realized that the nation that controlled technology would hold the keys to the future. But China was completely out of the race, merely a spectator in this historic transformation. At this moment, Ren posed an existential question to himself, a question that shook him to the core. Is it possible for China, the most populous country on earth, to remain entirely dependent on imported technology? Does it make sense for us to be mere consumers of what others produce when we have all the potential to shape our future with our own hands? The answer in his heart was clear. No, China had to stand on its own feet, develop its own capabilities, and become an unstoppable technological force. This unwavering belief, this visionary insight, was the spark that ignited his dream. In 1987, while the world was celebrating the dawn of a new era, Ren Zhengfei, in his 40s, was about to embark on a different kind of battle. He decided to establish Huawei, but the beginnings were painfully modest. A meager initial capital barely exceeding $5,000, and a headquarters that was nothing more than a small apartment in Shenzhen, which at the time was just a remote fishing village. No one could have imagined that these humble beginnings would give rise to a technological giant. But is a dream alone enough to change the course of a nation? Can one man, with a few thousand dollars and a big dream, challenge global technology giants and rewrite the rules of the game? In its early years, Huawei struggled fiercely for survival. The Chinese market was flooded with products from foreign giants with well-established reputations and advanced technologies. Competing against them was like an uneven battle between a rookie soldier and a fully equipped army. Imagine yourself in Ren Zhengfei's shoes during that time. How could a small, barely known startup penetrate a market dominated by giants like Ericsson and Nokia? What strategy could allow you to survive, let alone grow and thrive? Ren had a secret weapon, a different vision. Instead of trying to break into advanced markets already controlled by big competitors, he decided to focus on regions ignored by these giants, emerging markets in Africa and Asia. These regions suffered from weak infrastructure and different needs, 
and major companies considered them not profitable enough. Here, Huawei found its golden opportunity. It offered communication solutions at affordable prices with acceptable quality that met the needs of these markets. It was more flexible and responsive to local customer demands. Thus, Huawei began building its reputation gradually, step by step, but with unyielding determination. This was just the beginning, the initial spark that would ignite a massive blaze that would reshape the world of communications. By the turn of the millennium, Huawei was no longer a secondary player in the communications market. The Chinese company began showing bigger ambitions and taking confident steps toward developing innovative technologies. Survival was no longer the goal. Now it was about competing for dominance. But the burning question remains, how did Huawei, in just a few years, manage to outpace established Western companies with long histories and vast resources? What was the secret behind this meteoric rise? The secret lay in a bold and unconventional strategy, massive and continuous investment in research and development, R&D. Huawei didn't just settle for selling existing equipment. It reinvested a large portion of its profits, often exceeding 15% of its annual revenue, into developing new and innovative technologies. This intense focus on innovation enabled it to achieve quantum leaps and surpass its competitors in the fierce technology race. By 2012, Huawei had become the leading provider of communication networks in more than 170 countries worldwide. It was no longer just a competitor. It had become a dominant force on the brink of controlling the fourth generation of communications networks, 4G, which paved the way for the era of high-speed internet. But the real threat, which would ignite the Great War, was still lurking in the near future. The turning point the moment when the United States began to feel the real danger came with the advent of 5G networks. This was not just an upgrade to existing internet networks, but a comprehensive technological revolution that would change how we communicate, work, and live entirely. 5G was not merely faster internet. It was the digital infrastructure that would support everything from autonomous vehicles to smart cities, advanced healthcare systems, and even the sensitive security infrastructure of nations. But why was 5G technology such a big problem for the United States? Why did it trigger such panic and concern in Washington? The reason is simple but profound. Whoever controls 5G networks controls the flow of global information. This means enormous political and economic influence in a world increasingly dependent on data and digital connectivity. Imagine having the power to control the infrastructure that connects everything together. That's unparalleled power. And here lay the catastrophe for the United States. Huawei was in the driver's seat in developing and deploying 5G technology far ahead of its Western competitors. The Chinese company was on the brink of becoming the global supplier dominating this critical technology. Was the United States, the superpower that had ruled the global system for decades, ready to relinquish this control and allow China to dominate the future of global communications? The answer was clear and unequivocal. No. And with Donald Trump's rise to power, the United States began to view Huawei not just as a successful business, but as a real and direct threat to its national security. In 2018, the war officially began. The United States launched a systematic and fierce campaign against Huawei, using accusations of espionage for the Chinese government as a pretext. Severe economic sanctions were imposed on the company including banning it from dealing with American companies that supplied it with vital components and essential operating systems. Imagine the magnitude of this blow. A technology giant like Huawei, heavily reliant on American chips and operating systems like Android, was suddenly cut off from these vital technologies. Could any company, no matter how powerful, withstand such lethal sanctions? Was this the knockout blow that would bring down the Chinese giant for good? But the surprise was that Huawei did not surrender. Instead of giving in, the Chinese company demonstrated unexpected resilience and adaptability. It began developing its own systems, invested heavily in building its own manufacturing capabilities for the components it previously imported from the United States, and focused more on the Chinese domestic market to compensate for massive losses in global markets. However, despite all these efforts, the losses were enormous. 
to the point where the company had to sell its sub-brand Honor to maintain sufficient liquidity and ensure its survival in the market. Was this the end of Huawei's story? Did the United States succeed in destroying this Chinese technology giant? Despite the harsh blows and severe sanctions, Huawei did not collapse. Instead, it showed unwavering determination and resilience in the face of the crisis. The company began rebuilding itself from scratch, increasingly relying on local manufacturing of vital components that it once imported. Most importantly, it developed its own operating system, Harmony OS, in an attempt to completely break free from Android. But the question that still puzzles the world, has Huawei truly managed to overcome this existential crisis? Has it regained its strength and position in the global market? The truth is that Huawei still faces enormous challenges. And while the massive Chinese market has been a lifeline. To keep these inspiring stories coming to you, don't forget to subscribe to the Econo Tales channel and activate the bell. If this episode resonated with you, please like and support us. Thank you so much for following along.